Welcome back. It's time for a two loom update. The two looms that we talked about in an earlier video, we're going to update. And Mara has done some stuff. I've been making a lot of sticks. Looms involve a lot of sticks. And other things that are kind and of fuzzy. Other things, yes. That are kind of fuzzy. So <laughs> let's head on down to the basement and we'll give you an update. We'll start out with this more modern loom, the Varpapu. She can pronounce it correctly, I can't. Anyhow, she'll go into some of the small details she started with already, and then we'll move on to the antique barn loom. Mar? Um, mostly, I've been getting this back together. Um, I had to make a couple of extra parts. I made an extra one of these, turned it, and then sliced off the shoulders. Uh, made an extra handle for one of the ratchets in back. Um, and otherwise just cleaned it up. I have a little more cleanup to do where there are some uh, pieces of masking tape that are pretty well stuck to it from assembly. And um, that's about it for this loom. Heat gun and some goo, goo gone will get those pieces of masking tape off. So now let's move on oh, to... Wait, wait, heddles. Oh, heddles, yeah, yeah. these things. This, oh, uh, looms involve a lot of sticks. Uh, these sticks are called harnesses, and the harnesses hold the heddles. The heddles are these things. These are modern heddles uh, made by Texolve, um, but the antique barn loom did not have any, and uh, so what I've been working on is making lots of heddles for the antique barn loom. We'll get into the numbers in a little bit. Okay, next, next step. Now on to the antique barn loom misnomer only because it was found in a barn. Anyway, Mara will proceed to go through all the details of all the neat parts she's made and something I consider kind of boring, but she had fun doing it. Mara? Yep, uh, so you will notice first off, there was a lot of white residue all over the loom still. Um, this is from where we put the tin bore on last winter to get rid of the powder post beetles. I've been monitoring it since then, um, nearly a year, and um, I've seen no further evidence of beetles. So I'm gonna come down today after we're done shooting this and wash off all the white stuff um, and then give it, uh, once it's dry, a good uh, oiling down, you know, uh, mineral oil, uh, not mineral oil, um, boiled linseed oil uh, mix. And uh, you know that'll just feed and preserve the wood. Um, so, when this loom came to me, it had two harnesses. Um, and it has old carpet warp heddles on them. I decided that I'm upgrading this loom back up to four harnesses. I'm not sure it ever was a four harness loom, but I can make it one. Um, although there's some indication that it was at one point. Anyway, um, I made a complete set of bars for the harnesses. That's eight of them. Um, these are called horses. I'm pretty sure these were the original horses. If this loom had horses, it originally had four harnesses probably because you don't need these if it's only a two harness loom. I made a different style of horse. Um, it's more of a Scandinavian style. Um, I need four of them, so these have also been finished. Um, I need to go and put some finish on these. These are leaf sticks. These are the cloth and warp um, rods that you attach you know, all the threads to for the warp. Um, and last but not least, all of the heddles. Um, now I tell, tell, tell the story of the, <laughs> first of all, say how many there are. There are 1,400. Say that again. 1,400 which is batches, it is 14 batches of 100 each. Um, I figured if I'd made 100 a day for 14 days, I would have more than I will ever need. Um, Watching Forged, Forged in Fire and shows like that. Yeah, a uh, very good television watching project. Um, the other things I will need to do to get this loom working are um, to attach the horses. I will need some leather straps. I will also need to figure out whether I want to use leather straps for attaching the um, cloth and warp uh, sticks, which the original loom had leather straps. They're still on there. They're really rotted. I have to take them off. Um, I may use leather again. I'm not quite sure. 
And last, oh, uh, you can't see them under the loom, but I have treadles. I have two extra treadles. Uh, these are ash. They could have been probably uh, lesser wood, but I happen to have ash in the shop. And it's a good sturdy wood for um, anything that's going to um, be um, subject to pressure. So this will get a lot of me stepping on them. So there are four of those under there right now. I've got two extras. Um, and the last thing we need to do is put boots on the loom. Now I have to explain that in just a second. Um, the bottom of the legs, you know, the uprights for the loom are a little rotted. So we yeah. have to... Huh. Yeah, you're right. She's, she's, what she's talking about is two of them. That yeah. are, this one over here is the worst one. Yeah. Then there's one over here. We're going to make elephant shoes for them. Yeah. We're going to uh, stabilize that with some git rot. Um, and then yeah. we are going to put a pressure treated lumber pad under them, bring the loom up to level, and then put a frame around each leg holding that pad in place to um, um, keep the loom, you know, keep that pad from shifting out from under the leg. And anyway, the loom's going to have boots. And, and we'll, we'll take the verticals for those boots and we'll do some edge treatment on them on the router yeah. or the table saw. Make it pretty. Miter joints, so they, they look nice, and then stain them somewhat to look like the wood we have here now, so it adds a little bit of age to them. Once this has been cleaned up and Mara go, comes down here with the linseed oil mix, the spit coat, and does all the linseed oil, this is going to have a nice, really nice color to it. And we'll, we'll do that with the, with the elephant, elephant shoes as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, the first project I'm going to do on it is probably going to be rugs, because that's probably the last thing that it was used for re weaving. I've got carpet warp. And my sister sent me oh, some old sheets, and I've been ripping strips to make the weft. Again, watching television, forging and fire shows yes, like that. Very good TV watching. Just tearing and tearing and tearing and tearing. And you get used to that after a while. Yes, very messy. <laughs> and that's about it. Yep, that's about okay. It. That's a bit. Of, so we didn't forget them. They're still uh, in process, but we've got a lot, a lot of other projects going on yes. in the shop as well. So um, tiny looms. Tiny, tiny looms and Mara's shutters, which you can see the videos, I'll link a, in the description, a link to Mara's, uh, to Sarah's shutters. shutters, which we're doing in a multi-stage uh, process. So with that, but wait, there's more. Mara has been extremely busy doing little end things and stuff to the loom. So Mara, tell them how busy you have been and what you've been doing. Um, among other things, I cut keys for the loom. Um, we had held it together with ratchet straps earlier, but uh, got the keys done. That's holding everything together now. Um, I came down with a crowbar and hammer and got all the old leather strapping off the loom. It was very rotted. And then came down with uh, Murphy's oil soap and a bucket and sponges and washed everything down and then let it dry. Now that it's dry, today I came down here with a mixture of uh, boiled linseed oil, a little bit of tongue oil, and some min mineral spirits and sloshed the loom down with that. Um, didn't do the bottom of the feet because we're going to treat them all with a rot preventative. Um, but uh, after we do that, then I can start redressing the loom. I can start adding the heddles and uh, put the new leather strapping or cloth webbing on and just so you know, incremental progress. Um, one thing you all will want if you're interested in doing this yourself is warping and dressing the four post barn loom by Kate Smith at the Marshfield School of Weaving. It's an excellent book. It tells you everything you need to know about uh, all the parts of loom and warping it. Um, so there we go. And with that, on to the next video at some point.